Well, Labour's Brexit position has, in the words of the Shadow Chancellor John McDonnell, evolved uh, and the party's stance on a second Brexit referendum, that it's not currently their position, has left some thinking that they've deliberately left the odd door open. Well, today, the London Mayor Sadiq Khan has thrown his weight behind a second vote. So joining us now is the Shadow International Trade Secretary, Barry Gardner. Thank you for being with us. Uh, this Pleasure. morning. It feels that we should start off with the comments by the London Mayor saying that he would like to see a second referendum. Do you agree with him? Look, John's right. We, we've said that we haven't ruled anything off the table. But I thought what Carmen Jones said earlier on your programme was very sensible. Um, actually, to, to have a second referendum would be to throw this government a lifeline. Here we have a Prime Minister who is, is facing going to Parliament with whatever she eventually manages to conclude with the European Union uh, and find that it is not possible to get it through the British Parliament. Well, in those circumstances, I, I think the right thing to do is to say if this government cannot do what it is supposed to and govern, then we need actually to change the government. Calling for a second referendum is, is, is really giving her a lifeline because then she can say, oh, well, um, if I can't get it through Parliament, um, I'll go back to the people. But what does she go back to the people on? Because this is not just a, a two-way question. You know, is it whatever she's managed to negotiate or no deal and we crash out? Or is it whatever she's managed to negotiate and we stay in the European Union? So it's not clear. Whoever writes the question manipulates the answer that they want to get. And of course, it will be this government that is writing the question. The first referendum caused real division in our society. I, I think the challenge now is actually to try and heal society. It's to take note of what was originally said by the British people in that referendum, but to do so in such a way that is protecting jobs and our economy and growth. Because many of the things, and Carwin was absolutely right, many of the things that are now being talked of by the government as part of a possible deal were never talked on the you, doorstep. You spoke there about the divisions that the Brexit vote um, created, and you said previously that a second referendum could actually lead to civil disobedience. I mean, what do you mean by civil disobedience? Look, um, what does that mean? Well, you know, you know what civil no, disobedience... No, I, I don't, genuinely. What, well, what does it civil, mean? Civil, civil disobedience is, is what, um, uh, you know, people have campaigned on the streets, they go marching on the streets, um, uh, the suffragettes engaged in civil disobedience, um, the people at Green Common engaged in civil disobedience. So violent protests, is that what you're no, saying? No, absolutely not. No, look, let's, let's try and address the fundamental issue here. OK, because the fundamental issue is, do we want a society that is united and says, OK, I haven't got everything that I want. We've got we've got two groups in society um, one that are ardently wanting to leave everything to do with the European Union, whether it's customs union, wh whether, whether it's single market, whether it's Eurosat, wh whether it's, you know, the European emissions trading scheme, they, they just want out. A another group that say no. What, what we want is we're prepared to leave the European Union, but actually we, you know, we don't want to leave all those other things which give real benefits can to I our just, society. Can I just bring back? Can I just bring you back to what would to happen? We've got to unite the country, not increase the division. Can I just bring you back to what you think would happen if there was a second referendum? What, what, what do you think would happen? Do you think we'd see people on the streets? Do you think we'd see movements like you mentioned the suffragettes, like that kind of passionate? sometimes look, violent campaigning look, groups. I, so what, what, what do you think? I, I, I think that people are deeply, deeply upset on both sides. And what we have to try and do is to heal that division, not perpetuate it. Uh, so you do know, you think that a second referendum should be taken off the table then? No. What, it sounds like you do. No. What, what, what I, look, the reason, the reason that we have not ruled anything out is because nobody knows what's going to happen over the next few weeks. But that is an indictment of this government. This government went into those negotiations without a proper mandate. They accepted the, the timetable that was given to them by the Commission. On day one, they, they, they decided that they would first of all agree all the things that Europe wanted without actually, and, and then move on to the thing that we wanted, which was a new trade relationship with them. That was insane. This government has messed up the deal for the past two years. 
What we need to try and do now is chart a way through the difficulty that their incompetence has caused. That's what we in the Labour Party are doing. That's why we're not, we're not saying it's definitely got to be this or it's definitely got to be that. We're saying we have to be flexible because we have to respond to the situation let's, as it arises. Um, let's talk about that flexibility. <clears throat> we, we, we mentioned the Carmen Jones interview. I thought it was very interesting that he said that, in his view, checkers was a step in the right direction. Even though Labour wanted to go further, it was a step in the right direction. Um, Emily Thornberry, however, has effectively said that whatever deal Theresa May comes back with, Labour is not going to support it. I mean, is that really no, no, responsible? She, no, she, no, sorry, Emily didn't say that. She, she said, I can't see them coming back with a deal that is going to be at our, our text and that a workable deal was just not going to happen under yeah. May. Look, uh, and that sounds like she's uh, not going to vote for anything that uh, Theresa May Emily, comes Emily in, 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 quite properly expressed her deep scepticism as to whether this government was going to produce a deal that was acceptable. I think most people in the country think that we are heading for a situation in which whatever is eventually concluded with the European Union is going to be unacceptable to a blocking minority in Parliament. But you think that it, you could see a solution where Labour would support a deal if you thought it was acceptable and met your tasks. Is that what you're saying? If it meets the six tests that we've laid down, if, if, it is a, if it's a deal that is clearly going to be positive both for the security of the country, because remember this is not simply about trade and economics, it's also about our future security relationship with the European Union. It's a much wider uh, engagement that we have that the government and, and some of those who want no deal are seeking to wrench us away from. Uh, now, um, a little bit of mischief uh, in the newspapers. Um... You always do this to me. <laughs> what, what happened to that <laughs> nice man that, that, that was, was here when you were away? Oh, you know, he was never I'll nearly have to so ask, nasty I'll have to, to me. I'll have to ask him that. I'll ask who, I'm not sure how he take that when you see it as a compliment or an insult. Um, now, there's a story in the Sunday Times, forgive me, I'm being mischievous, uh, claiming that allies of John McDonnell are sounding people out about Jeremy Corbyn's future. So, so do you think that John McDonnell would be a good leader of the Labour Party? John has done an extraordinary job this week. Um, he has gone out there talking to the public, talking to the British people about how ordinary people can get a fairer share of the wealth that they create. He's talked about rights for gig economy workers. He's talked uh, about the way in which those workers in bigger companies, over 250 uh, employees, can get shares in those companies so that they feel a sense of ownership in the productivity and the profits of the, those companies. Um, and he's talked about a financial transaction tax um, which would actually improve our financial services by stopping the churn and the, uh, and the speculation um, but bring five billion into the economy. These are the things that the Labour Party has been focused on this week about how to make ordinary people in this country better off. That's what we want to see. But look, Everybody in okay. the shadow cabinet is absolutely united around Jeremy's leadership. Jeremy has been a, a, an extraordinary leader at a time when, when people thought it was not possible for the Labour Party to come back. He has done that and we're united around him for one reason. Because the Labour Party is the best means of improving the social conditions for people in this country, making it a fair and equal and a better place. Now, I'm, I would love to talk to you more about trade, but I know that Labour are very keen to, for us uh, to get this final question in because it's a story that they're pushing this weekend uh, about uh, the high streets and about the state of the high streets. And I do want to talk about it because in Bridge End, it mm. came up again and again in yeah. Wales that people were pretty devastated about the sight of shops closing down and the state of the high street. So what are you planning to do? Well, look, um, 100,000 jobs have gone in retail in the past three years. That, that's quite extraordinary, if you think of that as a proportion of people in, in, in employment in our country. They've disappeared off the high street. Uh, and so what we're saying is that we want to have a register uh, of the landlords of those premises so that we can easily replace companies going back in there rather than seeing them left vacant. Uh, and also... Okay. To, Sorry, is that my time? I think, I think that's pretty much your time up. <laughs> okay. oh, we did get there. I, I, I hate doing this to you, but um, thank you uh, very much for being with us. Always uh, a pleasure. Barry Gardner, thank you.